come out, but it can set rubber bands into this roll thing. Oh. Some of you, as you look at your rubber bands, might see them like, who had the O-rings? Okay, somebody had O-rings on their, that was you. Yeah, and instead of rubber bands and the O-rings had formed little knots much larger than what the grommet would be. So had he deployed with those O-rings all knotted up, it probably would have come through, but it may have hesitated. It may have, it may have, you know, caused an extra like nanosecond. I'm going to do a lot of talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Probably. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Probably. Right. <laughs> so when we do the loop, we need it big enough so that the inside lines are not going to come through, but small enough that nothing's going to want to wrap around. So again, you use your judgment, and I always do a little squeeze here so that it doesn't wear, so that it's nice and it conforms to wanting to release. Okay, I also like the rubber bands not highly twisted, just because of that rolling effect. Are those just ordinary rubber bands, or is it special, special material? Yeah. Rubber, rubber. I get them from American Rubber. If you need any, I have to buy 10 pounds at a time. Do you know how many rubber bands are in 10 <laughs> pounds? <laughs> Using four on each. Can you get them from an office supply place? Pardon? Can you get them from an office supply place? Sometimes you can find them. And in fact, if you're... Let me lock this up. Thanks. Okay, if you're really desperate and need rubber bands, what you... What you're looking for, I use number 61, and what you're looking for is a rubber with good elasticity, and if you put it on like a quarter inch bar and pull, you want it to break in no more than 30, 35 pounds. So you can use a fish scale and do pulls, and um, that's about the max you want it to break. It has to hold, and it's going to disintegrate in time. It, it, they weaken. Uh, part of the reason that we put this on loosely, in fact, is all these have to do is stow the lines. If you pull this tight and it's in the, in the cold and in the heat, then it weakens this prematurely. We don't need a lot of tension. We don't need to have pre-stretch. We just need to hold the lines with it. Okay, so now if you have any question whether this is going to work, what you do is a slow pull. And you should see each band releasing without getting hung up. So, in fact, if you ever question how your parachute was packed, it's good just to hold, hold the handle and do a slow pull. Everything should snake out in a nice orderly sequence without binding. If it does, then it's probably just fine. Okay, I talked a little bit before about friction causes heat causes damage. So we want to minimize the amount of friction we have. This is the line compartment. And if you notice, the mouth of this compartment is smaller than the, than the bag. So when I stow the lines, I'm going to start coming up the nearest side. It doesn't matter which side it is. The nearest side. And I'm going to progressively S them down, uh, down the pocket. If you go to a normal rigger, not you, a normal rigger, without any instructions, they would, <laughs> yeah. they would take the lines, go straight up the front, right in the middle, and then they would ask cross back and forth. And if you said, why are you doing that? They would say, well, that's what I was taught to do. And yes, in skydiving, they have systems with stoves uh, that are set up like that. But we also know in our application, we want to minimize friction on these particular bags. This is very slippery material. It's silicon impregnated material. So the idea is to hold the lines in, pr in place, free stowing them. As you throw the bag, you want it just to freely snake out so that it gets to full extension so that you have the sequence that you want. You have a controlled sequence. Okay, so here, some people have packing paddles. I just have small fingers. So we're going to start up at the side.
Betty, is it ever acceptable to maybe put a, a real small rubber band to help hold the essence? Like right out there on the ends, kind of like you did here. Why would you want to do that? Just to hold the essence there. In the bit. bag? Yeah. I have seen them. Uh, I've seen them I know. I see a lot of home pack jobs come through rubber bands. Right, right. Um, I don't, it depends on your deployment bag, but on something like this, absolutely not. The more stuff that you have, the more stuff can get tangled, can get wrong. Sometimes just a little hesitation in a line coming out, especially with a slow speed deployment. Fast speed, no problem, you just whip that off. But slow speed is where we see the problems happening, where we want to keep the system as clean as possible. So if you use rubber bands, cut yourself off from your glider. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, Wait, no. Yeah, okay. Well, depending on what chute you have and what harness you have. Yeah, you can see this one too. I like the clear part and see Yeah. Yeah. You can. Now, when we get to the end, as you notice, some lines are longer than others. Does that mean the parachute was built wrong? No. I no, hope you're not. <laughs> it means that sometimes you get one line that just so happens to be on the outside of the curve consistently it shortens up. It's not a big deal because again we're going to try to minimize friction but sometimes there are things that you just cannot help and that's one of them. So what's the advantage of having that pocket with a smaller opening? Uh, with a larger opening, once you pull this out, if the bag is this direction, the lines can all slide out. You can get lined up. If you have lined up, then your chance of entanglement is greater. Here, it keeps everything controlled. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. You know how women are. <laughs> we like control. No hesitation in that word. Okay, now the paraswivel. Okay, this is our next problem here. Where do we put it? If we I like to put it in the line pocket, but on some harnesses, since you're laying on the line part pocket, you might feel this big clump. And that's not good. Okay? Uh, so if you don't feel a clump, it's nice to have it in the line pocket. This is heavier. And if you throw this out with a slow deployment, before the bridle gets to full stretch, <coughs> this extra weight can pull the lines out prematurely. So that's why we want to control it. So if you don't want, if you feel a lump here, and some people do, some people don't, it's not a problem to just bring this out and stow it in the flap here, okay? Because it still stays in sequence. If, uh, if, let's say, a week from now you found you, you have that bumpy feel, just open it up, don't be afraid, open it up and slide it out, put it into this compartment and go ahead and put it back the way it was. You don't have to be afraid of your shoe. If you have any question about whether you did it right or wrong, do a slow pull. Make sure nothing hangs <coughs> up. Okay, from here we're going to do our last locking stow. And we're keeping the line compartment closed with the bridle. Okay, some, some people like to put a little extra bridle in here, that's absolutely fine, but my preference is just one loop of bridle. To lock it closed. Okay, if you happen to have 
like one and one and a half, one and three quarter inch webbing bridles, and I haven't seen any here. But what you can do so you don't get a big flare out here is literally you just pinch them, pinch them so that it makes sense. They want to come out nice and easily. You don't want a lot of flaring because you need it to release when it reaches full extension. It's all common sense. Okay, now when you put this back into your into your harness. What we want to do, if you have a front mount, okay, you want the handle on the outside. This helps the Velcro start to peel away. If you put it in this way, who is, ta who is I talking to? You, yeah, and try to extract it. It pushes on the, all of the, all the Velcro off and it sets up a sheer load and it's very hard to get out, okay? So you want it to come out this direction. In addition, remember when you get the parachute out of your harness to throw it, you want the bridle to remain in the harness. Most of you may have noticed as you opened up your Velcro to get the parachute out, a part of the Velcro at the bottom remained closed. In fact, almost all of you, nobody had a totally open container. You don't have arms that long. So the reason this stays closed is that's where your bridle is housed. It's free stowed back and forth. On the bottom, if I had a harness on, it would be right under the parachute on this platform. The reason we do it that way is, again, only as much bridle snakes out as is needed. It's just free stowed in there. If you if you put it in, you know, nice and neatly all underneath, you pull this out and you get bridal dump. Okay, so we want it to make sense. Um, some people take bridles, they S-fold them very neatly and put rubber bands on each side. So now you have a clump of bridle. I don't like this because when you throw it, this clump of bridle is heavier than the single layer of bridle. And so again, if for some reason it, it doesn't release immediately, it doesn't go to stretch, then you have this clump that can prematurely pull out your lines before you have full bridle stretch. Make sense? Okay, uh, most accidental deployments happen with freshly packed parachutes, so. What we want to do is, after your parachute's packed, in fact, we're gonna do some talking and Joe, you'll start packing that. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, after your parachute's packed, uh, I want you to put your parachute in your own harness. Okay, if you have any question about it, call us over and we'll take, I'll take a look and just to make sure everything's snaked right. You put it in the container, snake it, make sure to hook your parachute bridle back up to the carabiner. Make sure everything's nice and straight and neat down the side of your harness. And then I want you to put your safety locks in first before you close it off, okay? Once the safety locks are in, then go ahead and work the Velcro in. Now it's gonna be hard, this is nice and big and puffy, but once you get it all in, I want you to lay your harness down with where your body would be on the floor, and I want you to sit on it. I want you to sit on it and roll back and forth, and what you're doing is squeezing the air out, and you'll find that the parachute expands to fit the shape of your container, and it comes out with no wrinkles, nice and smooth, much better than it was when you first came. So, that's what we want to do. Once you've sat on it, squeezed out the air, you take your knee, your knee test. Now